Hello one and all, welcome to another online video by Einstein Academy. In this video, we'll be looking at learning outcome B from the topic of atomic structure from the JCH2 chemistry syllabus. Learning outcome B states that candidates should be able to deduce the behavior of beams of protons, neutrons and electrons in an electric field. In order to understand this learning outcome, we first have to talk about the electrostatic force. So the electrostatic force is nothing difficult. It is simply the same as if it was like magnets. For magnets, we know that unlike poles attract and for charges, it's like no different. Unlike charges, we attract each other. And just like magnet, whereby light poles repel, for charges, it's the same. Light charges will repel each other. If one of the particles is charged and one of the particles is uncharged, then there'll be neither attraction nor repulsion between the two particles. We would also like to talk about um, some factors that affect the strength of the attraction or repulsion. So basically, the larger the magnitude of the charges, the stronger will be the force of attraction and repulsion. So what this means is the following. So imagine if I have two particles, whereby one of the particles is, has a charge of two plus, and another particle has a charge of minus. These two particles, the attraction between these two particles will be stronger than the attraction between a particle which is one plus charge and one minus charge. Basically just the number, the magnitude means the number, the size of the charge. If it's bigger, then basically the attraction will be stronger. Likewise, if we have a particle that is two plus charge and another particle that is of two minus charge, this attraction will likewise be stronger than the attraction between a two plus charge as well as a one minus charge, okay? So this is what this means. The larger the magnitude of the charges, the stronger the force of attraction or repulsion. Moreover, the closer the two charges are to one another, the stronger the force of attraction or repulsion. This is also very commonsensical, just like two magnets. If the magnets are closer to one another, the attraction will be stronger. And of course, if they are like poles, then the repulsion will also be stronger. So this is basically the electrostatic force. Now, having said that, what happens when we pass beams of protons, neutrons and electrons through an electric field? An electric field is basically one, you can think of it as one plate having a minus charge and one plate having a plus charge. Now what happens when we pass a beam of proton through this, through this electric field? Because as we have known, studied, that the proton is positively charged, the positive charge will be attracted to the negative plate and repelled by the positive plate. And hence the proton will be deflected towards the negative plate. The electron on the other hand is negatively charged and it will be repelled by the negative plate and attracted by the positive plate and as a result, the electron will be deflected to the positive plate. The last subatomic particle is the neutron and as we have studied, the neutron is electrically neutral and since it's electrically neutral, it will neither be attracted nor repelled by either of these plates and hence the neutrons just pass straight through in the electric field. So that's the first difference. Protons are attracted to the positive plate, electrons are attracted to the positive plate, while neutrons pass straight through. That is one difference between the behavior of beams of protons, neutrons, and electrons in an electric field. Now, there is a second difference, in, and is that, and is due to the mass of the electron being much smaller than that of the mass of the proton. So imagine if you're on a river bank and you're using a rope to pull the animals. One of the animals is a hippopotamus and the other animal is like say a much smaller fish. Certainly since the hippopotamus is much heavier, the hippopotamus will be uh, much slower put towards the bank of the river. And since the proton is much much heavier than the mass of the electron, the angle of deflection for the proton will be much smaller than that of the angle of deflection for the electron, which is what this point is trying to make. The electron is deflected much more than the proton because it has, a, it has a smaller mass. So this is the second key difference in the behavior of beams of protons and electrons in an electric field. Okay? So as a concrete example, as a question, this is an A-level question, November 2012, paper 3, question 4b. State two ways in which the behavior of electrons in an electric field differs from that of protons. So those are the two answers. The electrons is deflected to the positive plate, while the proton is deflected towards the negative plate. And the second difference is that the angle of deflection for electrons is much, much larger than the angle of deflection for a proton. 
Mathematically, it can be stated that the angle of deflection is proportional to the charge over the mass ratio. Basically, if the charge is larger, then the attraction to the plate will be stronger and the angle of deflection will be larger. So what we means is this, like for example, like if we compare the P plus charge to another particle that is two plus charge, the attraction to the negative plate will be stronger and it will go towards the plate faster and hence the angle of deflection will be much larger. So the angle of deflection is proportional to the charge and it's inversely proportional to the mass because as we have already known, if the mass is heavier, then it will move slower towards the plate and the angle of deflection will be smaller. As we have studied for mathematics, if we know that we have an equation which reads y is equals, sorry. If we have an equation which is y is proportional to x, mathematically it can also be written as y is equals to kx, whereby k is the proportionality constant between the y and the x. So there is no difference between this. If the angle of deflection is proportional to the q over m ratio, the angle of deflection can be written as equals to k multiplied by q over m, whereby the q is the charge, the m is the mass, and the k is the proportionality constant between the different variables. So how can we use this equation to solve questions? Okay, so I've simplified the notation a bit, whereby this symbol stands for the angle, no difference. Okay, so what? there are two steps to using this equation. Number one is that we usually we will have a test case to first determine the proportionality constant k. And then now, once we have found out what k is, then given any of two out of the three variables, and just to remind you, the three variables are basically the angle of deflection, the charge, as well as the mass. So if we have already solved for k, then given the angle of deflection and the charge, we can solve for the mass of the particle, or given the angle and the mass of the particle, we can solve for the charge of the particle, or the last case is that if we're given the charge and the mass of the particle, we can solve for the angle of deflection. So this is how we can use this mathematical relationship. So to concretely use this to solve a question, we will look at this question, November 2012, paper three, question 4A and 4B. So beams of charged particles are deflected by an electric field. If the particles are all traveling at the same speed through an electric field of constant strength, the angle of deflection is proportional to their charge over mass ratio. So in this question, they're actually nice enough to tell you that the angle of deflection is proportional to the charge over mass ratio. But this is something that even if they don't tell you, you should be expected to know. Okay, so in a particular experimental setup, protons are deflected through an angle of 15 degrees. So this is basically the test case. So, and how do we use this test case? So back to this step one, we will use the test case to determine the proportionality constant k. So how do we do that? The angle of deflection is positive 15 equals to k multiplied by the charge of protons. But as we have learned, the charge of the proton can be simply understood as plus one, whereas the mass, the charge is plus one, and the mass of the proton can be written to be also one. Okay, so the charge is plus one, whereas the mass is one, and therefore this would mean that k is equals to 15. And now we have the relationship between the angle of deflection and the charge over mass ratio. Sorry, not k anymore, not k anymore because we have solved for k. So this will be 15. And then the charge over mass ratio. So we have used the test case to find the proportionality constant. And now given two out of the three variables, we can solve for the third variable. Now in the next part of the um, in this part of the question, it says that assuming an identical set of experimental conditions, by what angles will the following particles be deflected? Whereby D is deuterium and T is tritium. So for example, D minus. So we have already worked out that the angle of deflection is 15 multiplied by the Q over M ratio. So for the, de the deuterium, the angle of the angle of deflection will be simply equals to 15 multiplied by the charge, which is minus one over the mass. The mass of the deuterium is two, which is basically the nuclear number. We will cover this uh, more in future videos, but for now you can just say it to be two, and this will be minus 7.5. Okay, notice that there is a negative sign in front of the angle. And why is there a negative sign? The reason is because this is a negatively charged particle, which means that it will be deflected towards the positive plate. 
On the tritium, same thing applies. The angle of deflection will be equals to 15 multiplied by the charge, which is plus 1, over the mass of the tritium, which is 3. And we will arrive at an angle at positive 5 degrees. Minus 5 degrees. And it's a positive value saying that the tritium particle will be deflected towards the negative plate. The last case is the helium 2 plus particle. So no different, angle of deflection equals to the charge, which is plus two in this case. And the helium, if you were to search the periodic table, it will be like this. And the mass is basically four, which means the angle of deflection will just be positive 0 0.5 degrees. So this is the answer to this question. And I hope that you now have a clearer view of how do we use this mathematical relationship to solve various types of questions in this learning outcome. The last part of the question is under identical conditions, a beam of particles R, each having 12 times the mass of a proton, was deflected by an angle of plus five degrees. Suggest the overall charge on a particle of R. No difference, angle is equals to 15, multiply by the Q over M ratio. In the previous part of the question, we were given Q and M and asked to solve for this angle. For this question, we are given the angle and the mass, angle and the mass, and we are expected to solve for Q. So the angle is plus five. The proportionality constant is 15, and we are expected to solve for Q. The mass ratio is 12 times the mass of a proton, which means that basically this is 12. If you were to solve for this, you will arrive at the answer of Q is equals to plus four. So basically the overall charge on the particle of R is plus four. Okay, given that the particle of R contains six protons, deduce the number of neutrons and electrons in the particle of R. So basically R contains six protons. And because it has a charge of plus four, it must mean that the number of electrons is equals to six minus four, which is equals to two. Okay, so basically it has six protons and two electrons and hence it will have a charge of four plus four. Um, the, and we're supposed to deduce the number of neutrons and because the mass of the particle is equal to 12 and the mass of the six protons is six, the mass of the electron is negligible. So the mass of Sorry. And hence the number of neutrons is equal to the total mass, which is 12. And this is basically the sum of neutron plus protons. If we were to take this minus the mass of the six protons, we will get the number of neutrons, which is equal to six. And hence it has six protons, two electrons, and six neutrons, fully answering the question for this A-level question. We'll cover more of this in the next part of the learning outcome, so don't be too worried if you can't follow at this stage. But what is essential for you to know is how do we use this mathematical relationship to solve for questions such as this part, such as the overall charge on a particle of R, as well as this part. It's very simple. Hopefully, you can follow this um, explanation of this learning outcome. Okay, just to restate the learning outcome, deduce the behavior of beams of protons, neutrons and electrons and electric field. This video task sums up this learning outcome B of atomic structure from the JCH2 chem syllabus. Hope that you like this video. If you like this video, just hit the like and subscribe button and I will look forward to see you for another video of learning outcome from atomic structure from the JCH2 chemistry syllabus. Thanks for tuning in and see you.